These are the clergy announcements for Trinity Tulsa. Trinity on Tap Pub Theology will be at Neff Brewery on Wednesdays at 6.30 and continuing for the next four weeks. Guild of St. Lawrence is selling hams again this year. You can sign up online. Christmas Market is December 10th. Sign up online. We need donations for the Kitty Market. The Giving Tree is in the Lady Chapel. Please bring gloves, mittens, scarves, etc. to put on the tree to help homeless population. We need socks for men in prison. Plain white socks sizes 9 to 12. You can donate them or donate money for them. There's a box in the Nichols Great Hall for the collection. T-shirts and hoodies are available for purchase. Uh, they must be ordered by December 3rd. They can be bought online. Erica Bonnier Greer will teach a class on unveiling the matriarchs of Advent, exploring Jesus's ancestry this Sunday, December 3rd at 10 a.m. on the third floor conference center. And finally, a friendly reminder that during the season of flu, COVID-19 and RSV, please use your discretion by protecting others, living into the precautions by self-selecting to wear a mask. Also, should you not be feeling good on a Sunday or the weekend, please know we understand if you stay at home from church. In fact, catch our live stream at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. We wanna keep everyone safe and healthy this holiday season. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, Trinity welcomes you.
This candle represents hope. Long ago, people had hope in their hearts as they waited for a savior, someone who would come to set the people free. We hope, too, for the Savior's love to be shared with our friends and to cover the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which thy son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who, do, who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not, remember the, do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus, for in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you await for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey 
when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. But what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet, th you meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. Please be seated. I offer a prayer written by Henri Nolan. Lord Jesus, Master of both light and darkness, send your Holy Spirit upon our preparation for Christmas. We who have so much to do seek quiet places to hear your voice each day. We who are anxious over many things look forward to your coming among us. We who are blessed in so many ways long for the complete joy of your kingdom. We whose hearts are heavy seek the joy of your presence. We are your people walking in darkness, yet seeking the light. To you we say, come Lord Jesus. Advent is the be official beginning of our liturgical year. If you want to know more, see me about new life at Trinity. As we begin the four weeks of Advent, we get the chance to anticipate the coming of Jesus. This week of our four seasons, or four weeks of Lent, is hope. The word Advent means the arrival of a notable person, thing, or event. The season of Advent is all about hope, the hope of who is to come. We remember baby Jesus coming into the world, but we also remember with anticipation the second coming of Christ. Baby Jesus came meek and mild. Adult Jesus will return with great power and glory. Our Old Testament reading from Isaiah. Reread those first few stanzas. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and causes the fire, the water to boil. To make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. Our gospel reading today helps us to understand that there are signs that point to the second coming. So if you know what a fig tree looks like when it's ready to bloom, you are way ahead of the game. Truly, the only one that knows the time and day is God. Jesus says that he himself doesn't know, the angels don't know, and certainly we humans don't know, but we are to be ready. It seems like every decade or so, we have a new group of believers who are convinced that Perusia, the second coming of Christ, is here right now. There have been people who were willing to literally drink the Kool-Aid in the belief that Christ was returning right now and that they were the elect. For over two millennia, people have believed that Jesus would return within their lifetime. During what some time 
During one such time, about 20 years ago, my therapist purchased a pair of shorts that had embroidered on them, left behind, on her bum, on the left side. In 2003, we are no different. We still think that we know more than God and that we understand the signs that are written in Scripture, or at least what Nostradamus has to predict it. Our arrogance shows when we think we can read what others could not, that we understand God's mind better than anyone else. Like last week's gospel, this is pretty clear to me. No one knows the day or the time except God, period. We are to be ready. How do we prepare? Same message as always. Love God. Love your neighbor. Stay awake, not literally, but be awake to what is happening in the world, not as signs that point to the end of times, but signs that point us to now, to human suffering, to ways to serve God through others. We don't have to look far. There are people right here in our midst that need our help, physically, financially, spiritually. Be awake to their needs. When I say look around, literally, I mean look around you. Is there someone here today that you don't know? Reach out to them. They may need that little piece of agape of God's love that you have to offer. Is there someone that we pray for in the prayers of the people that you do not know or that you do know? Or maybe someone that has the same name. Call them. Visit them. Pray for them. Is there someone homebound that needs a visit or a meal? Deliver yourself to them. Especially during this time of Advent, we ask you to donate to those in need. But that giving spirit needs to last far beyond just these four weeks. Stay awake to those needs of others. There are usually so many things happening during this time of year that it's hard to focus on what this season is truly about. Hope. The hope of Christ in Christmas. The ability to see Christ in others. The ability to act on that vision. In the book called Becoming the Answer to Our Prayers, Prayers for the Ordinary Radicals, by Shane Claiborne and Jonathan Wilson Hargrove, they write, the longer we pray, the more we are sure of this. Prayer is not so much about convincing God to do what we want God to do, as it is about convincing ourselves to do what God wants us to do. And isn't that what hope is all about? The possibility of God's work in the world and our willingness to do it. As we enter into Advent, this season of hope, what are you hoping for? What do you plan to do about it? My dismissal in CDU and in prison is always the same. I say, we are the hands and feet of Christ. By our hands we can hurt, with our hands we can love. It's up to us. God lets us choose. Today, God, I choose to put my life in your hands. Trust God to lead us in the direction that God needs us to go. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from life, true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He be the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Polson, our own bishop, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember St. Stephen's, Guymon, and St. Stephen's, Montev Montevideo, your Uruguay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government and in this and every land for our military, including Kevin Gray, Daniel Kanisky, Cam Hutton, Chaplain Gerald Bass, Andrew Bass, Megan Pixado, Trevor Ebert Ebeling, Jared Batiste, Jared Kalen, Aaron Wixon, Tracy Blankenship, Brody McNutt, Jose Seams, Jr., Philip DeFord, Adam Morgan, Jefferson Pickard, Caleb Monhay. For Joseph, our president, Kevin, our governor, and GT, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to, sumfer, to comfort and succor Barbara, Vivian, Jackie, Leslie, David, Polly, Belinda, Joe, Lisa, Kenton, Susan, Bob, Dalen, Mary, Marla, Kimberly, Caroline, Allie, Leslie, Patrick, Jen, Mel, Jack, Steve, Lisa, Libby, Grant, Mary Kate, Laura, Nanny, Bob, Grant, victims of violence and continued prayers for peace in the world, and all those who, in this transitory life, are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially Bob Bishop, 
beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Have a seat for just a couple moments, please. We have some announcements. Welcome if this is your first day here at Trinity. Please raise your hand. We have a gift bag here for you. Okay. Eric, are you here, Eric Saunier? No, we have someone that's going to be talking about the school board elections that are coming up. The Social Justice Commission has um, teamed up with Action Tulsa to assist people in getting registered to vote and to talk about the importance of voting in our local and our national elections. I believe if you see people out in the Nichols Great Hall with blue shirts that say social, social justice on them, talk to them. There also is note paper or notes in your pew that has a QR code that will bring you to the link to register or to get the information that you need. Trinity on Tap Pub Theology will be at the Neff Brewery on Wednesday, and it will be continuing for the next three Wednesdays. The Guild of St. Lawrence is selling hams again this year, and you can sign up online. Christmas Market is December 10th. Sign up online, and we need donations for the Kitty Market. The Giving Tree is in the Lady Chapel. Please, please bring gloves, mittens, scarves, etc., to put on the tree to help the homeless population. We need socks for men in prison. We need 982 pair of socks is what we need. Plain white socks, sizes 9 to 12, or you can donate money to them. There's a box in the Nichols Great Hall to put the socks in. T-shirts and hoodies are available for purchase. They must be ordered by today, and you can buy them online. COVID protocols, if you are feeling the need or desire to keep yourself safe, if you're not feeling well, don't come to church. If you want to mask, please feel free to do so. As Father Lee says, we lean into the precautions, not the panic. Um, pageant rehearsal today at noon, and our bake sale is ongoing out in the Nichols Great Hall. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, because thou didst send thy beloved Son to redeem us from our sin and death and to make us heirs of him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear Rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, O Lord, our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that as precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these holy gifts which we now offer unto thee the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, 
and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and thy power and the glory Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
join with me? In the name of this congregation, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you may go share this, the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we share one bread. Please join me in the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing and set you free from all sin. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. 